In this video, I will show you how to sew this elastic waistband skirt using bias tape and I'm going to go step by step so go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know when I post a new video. For this project, you will need some fabric and the measurements of your fabric will depend on the size of the person that you're making this for. For my waist measurement, my daughter's waist is 18 inches and I decided to make it 44 inches. You can either double or triple or quadruple the waist measurement. So if your child is 10 inches in the waist, you can make it 20, 30, 40. It just needs to be bigger than the waist measurement. The bigger it is, the more bunches you'll have in your fabric when it's done. And then the hip to knee for my daughter is 11 inches. So my fabric is 44 inches by 11 inches. This is the bias tape that I'll be using. I'll give you some more details whenever I use that. Just make sure you have the double fold and I have the extra wide. And this is my elastic and I'm using the knit. It stands up firm in the actual band so I like that more. Using scissors or a rotary cutter to cut up my fabric. I'm using either pins or clips, whatever you have on hand. It just depends on which one you have. Just use what you have or go buy some. So this is my fabric. And what I'm going to do with it is show you how the bias tape works. And again, my measurements for my fabric is 44 inches by 11 inches. And this is the bottom of my fabric and that's where I'm going to put the bias tape. It just gives your hem a cleaner finish and you do not have to hem it using your serger or your sewing machine. This just cleans up the ends. So as you can see, it opens up like this and it's just a long strip of fabric that has been sewn together. And just make sure this is a very important step when you're using bias tape that's the double fold. What you're going to do is you're going to hold it up and see which side is longer. So as you can see, there's two sides to this and then there's a meeting point in the middle and it opens up like this and the fabric just slips in the middle. And that back part is taller, so that needs to go on the wrong side of your fabric. This needs to be on the back side of your fabric. So as you can see, I'm going to open that up and the biggest side is going to go on the back. And that ensures that whenever you're sewing, it's at least getting that back side of your bias tape. So the longer side or the bigger side needs to be on the back side of your fabric. And then I'm going to take my clips. I'm going to ensure that the fabric is in the middle corner there and this is my helper or she said she was helping but didn't really do much help. So I'm going to make sure that my fabric is meeting in the middle point of my bias tape and the larger side is on the back so it's on the wrong side of my fabric. And then I'm going to clip those into place and I'm going to do this all down the bottom side of the skirt. So if you don't have a pattern that is uh, one direction, you don't have to worry about that. Mine has a direction, so I had to pinpoint the bottom. I do start off with a back stitch at the beginning, as well as at the end. And then once that is done, I am going to go back over to my table and I'm going to put my seam together, which is the open edge. And I'm going to clip that with my pins in place. And then I'm going to sew a single stitch down that side. And also whenever you do the bias tape, you can do a single stitch on that as well. You could use the same thread to kind of mask it a little bit more, but I'm just making this for my daughter. So I'm just gonna use white thread. So now I'm going to single stitch this side. And that is my seam. And for a cleaner finish, I am going to take my iron and I'm going to iron down that seam just to make it a little bit more flat. If you have a serger machine, that would be perfect for that step of sewing your seam together because it just cut off that excess edge and it'll be a whole lot cleaner. But I'm just going to iron mine down with my iron since I did use the sewing machine. Once I do that, I will take and roll over the top part of the skirt, just a small little piece, maybe like a fourth of an inch, if that. This is what we're going to use to encase our actual elastic band around the waist of the skirt. So I'm just going to go around with my iron and do a one fourth inch and try to make sure it's even all the way around and iron it down just to keep it in place. 
if you still want to learn how to sew or you're intimidated, I do have a video up and the link should be above the screen now showing you how to thread or set up your Brother LX3817, which is the sewing machine that I'm using. And it's very cheap and inexpensive for sewing machines and it gets the job done. So if you want to learn, just go on over and watch that video and then you can go purchase your sewing machine or get it out of the closet. So after I do that, I'm taking my elastic, which is 18 inches, making sure that it fits into this encasement. And then I'm going to take my iron and go all around it again, just like I just did before for that first seam. And this is where you're going to encase your elastic waistband. So I'm just going around with my iron, folding down that flap and just making sure that it's even all the way around. And then I'm going to use my iron again to make sure that when I sew, um, when I use my sewing machine, it doesn't move and it's in the correct place. So now I'm going to take two pins and you can pin all the way around. I find that does take time, but it does help your finished product look a whole lot, a whole lot better. So I'm going to flip it inside out and iron it just again, just to make sure everything is down. Now I'm going to get two pins to mark my start and stop. And this is so that I know when to start sewing and where to stop so that I can sew my encasing for my elastic waistband. And just leave an opening so that you can get the elastic waistband in. And this is me using my sewing machine going around that encasement. I should have pinned mine all the way around like I normally do, but I figured I was a big girl now. Apparently I was wrong, but it gave me a little bit of difficulties and it's fine. If you need to pin it, pin it. When in doubt, pin it. So now I'm going to take my elastic waistband and push it through. It takes me a lot of time, so I did that off camera. Now that my elastic waistband is gathered at the end, I'm going to do an overlap of almost maybe an inch or so. And I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to pin that into place. And then I'm going to sew that off camera using a single stitch in my sewing machine. If you are still here, go ahead and like this video, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know when I post my next video. Now that I have sewn down my elastic, I can get rid of this extra using some scissors. And now I can take the encasing and roll that over it. And now all I have to do is sew that opening, well, where I left the opening at on my sewing machine using a single stitch. And I'm just gonna move my fabric into place first just to put all the rouging and the um, make it look better. Make sure when you are sewing this on your sewing machine that you are pulling your elastic to stretch it into place. And there you have it. I have a finished actual skirt. If you need to, you can play around with the placement of your rouging by just pulling it at the top of the waistband and just making the fabric line up perfectly. And there you have it. These measurements can be adjusted. You just need two measurements from the person you're making this for, and that is the waist and the hip to knee.